For a long time, scientists thought that Earth was the only planet in our solar system that harbored liquid water. But at the same time, there were clues that water might be found elsewhere. There is in fact, far off, on the second moon of Jupiter, quite possibly a world ocean that rivals the size of any of the oceans to be found on Earth. And both NASA and the European Space Agencies are planning to explore that possibility. Europa is the second moon of Jupiter, and you can see its orbit here in red. Orbiting a bit closer to Jupiter is the huge volcano moon Io. And orbiting a bit further out are two other large moons, Ganymede and Callisto. Now, Europa and its home planet Jupiter are far from the Sun, approximately 740 million kilometers. So Europa receives far less sunlight than Earth. And this means its surface is cold and frozen. It is in fact made of water ice, which maintains a mean surface temperature of minus 171 degrees Celsius. So cold in fact that the ice to be found on Europa is as hard as granite. So how can it be that what is clearly a frozen ice world can harbor a vast liquid ocean? Europa is locked into a tight orbit with the solar system's largest planet by far, Jupiter. Spiraling around the immense planet at nearly 14 kilometers per second, Europa passes behind Io, one of the solar system's largest moons, and in front of the two other great moons, Ganymede and Callisto. This results in Europa being pulled by enormous tidal forces, and these forces create internal friction that heats the moon's interior. A layer of water ice surrounds the surface, and somewhere deep beneath that surface, that ice has melted to form a gigantic ocean equal to more than twice the mass of all the oceans on Earth. This image, taken by the Galileo spacecraft, portrays a region of that icy surface in an area known as the Connemara region. Here, the ice is thin, and something has fractured it. Perhaps tidal forces, perhaps an asteroid impact, the landscape looks like it has been broken up and shattered, much in the way of disturbed ice floating over an ocean on Earth. And this gives us clues to what is going on beneath Europa's surface. This image clues us in to the reality that the surface of Europa is actually floating upon a liquid, and the bright silvery areas are regions of fairly pure water ice. And in the reddish areas, we see discoloration that probably comes from mineral and possibly organic sediments that washed over the ice from the ocean below when this disturbance occurred long ago. These discolored areas provide evidence that the ocean beneath Europa's surface is salty and mineral rich. And that indicates that the oceans of Europa may extend all the way from its frozen surface to a terrestrial mantle beneath. That's important because for life to be found on Europa, it would have to have access to the minerals to be found in the mantle. So does Europa's ocean extend all the way to its mantle? The crust itself might provide clues, so understanding it is a subject of much theorizing and study among scientists. Here, we have an artist's depiction of the possible thicknesses of ice on Europa. The left side represents thin ice and the right side deep ice. If the ice that comprises Europa's crust is thin, then the heating of that ice will come directly from geothermal activity such as volcanic eruptions arising from the rocky mantle beneath. This heat will lead directly to melting of the crust, its occasional breakup, and the turning over and renewing of Europa's surface. If, on the other hand, that rocky crust is very thick, Geothermal activity will still provide the initial heat within Europa's ocean, but this heat will then go to warming up pockets within that thick icy crust, which will create hollows and regions of instability that are played upon by Europa's massive tidal forces, generating more friction and heat, ultimately leading to the same result, that ocean occasionally breaking out onto the surface and renewing Europa's icy crust. In either case, that tidally generated geothermal heat is what keeps Europa's waters in a liquid state, despite the icy surface. Everywhere we find life on Earth, we find water. This is because water makes the perfect solvent for carbon-based life. And insofar as we know, liquid water is a necessity for life. 
So discovering a moon in our own solar system that may in fact be a giant ocean world just under the surface offers tremendous prospects for discovering the chemistry of life. And it is amazing to think that if in fact Europa does harbor life, it is empowered to do so by the immense tidal forces generated by its relationships with its nearby moons, such as Io here in the foreground. If life is there at all, it may not be complex like we see on Earth. It might only be unicellular. Life on Europa would get energy very differently from life on Earth. So if it is there, it could tell us a great deal about how life can evolve elsewhere in the universe. As we see in Earth's deep oceans, that life would likely derive its energy from heat gradients deep down by volcanic vents. And this very different environment would have caused such life to take very different evolutionary pathways. But. If life can exist in Europa's vast, dark ocean, it would tell us something new, something amazing about the universe, that our world is not the only one that harbors a tree of life, that life in the universe may in fact be common. It may indeed be that the universe is rich in life, and we humans, presently confined to the small blue world, simply need to learn better where and how to look. And even if life does exist there, and the universe itself is rich in life, and life is everywhere, what it would tell us is that sentient life, self-observing, aware, thinking, dreaming life that reaches for the stars, and tries so hard to communicate across the vast depths of space and time, life like ours, complex and intelligent life, might be rare, and thus, still precious, still unique. This year, the European Space Agency intends to launch the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE. And only the year after, NASA intends to launch the Europa Clipper. Both probes will repeatedly orbit the icy moons of Jupiter, especially Europa, and also Ganymede. And there was talk of the Clipper putting a lander on Europa, though as NASA is unsure of the surface, those plans seem to have been sidelined. But lender or no, both JUICE and the Clipper will carry advanced instrumentation designed to tell us whether or not those moons in fact carry the chemistry of life. It will take years for those probes to reach Jupiter, but nonetheless, it is an exciting time for space exploration. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story. Sky Story is part of the Understory Network, a collection of programs devoted to the study of the natural world. In MicroStory, we study the invisible world of the very small. In UnderStory, we examine natural history and issues of conservation. And in SkyStory, we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that like button.